Hi everyone, it's Sarah, the owner and maker behind MultifariousNature.com. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. If you are a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, big welcome back. And a special thank you um, to those who are new subscribers. We have a few new ones on this channel. And um, just want to thank you guys so much for joining me. And I'm so glad that you subscribed. If you haven't subscribed and you are uh, you are interested in this content or you do find you enjoy it, please hit the subscribe button below and if you hit the bell, you'll be notified when new videos are posted. I do try to post weekly. Um, that is usually the goal. <laughs> so we're gonna we got a lot to talk about, a lot of knitting. The light's gonna come in and out. It is kind of overcast today, typical of Michigan this time of year, and uh, it is quite cold. So I am wearing my quite pilled <laughs> um, little lightweight raglan. It's by Pearl Soho. Pearl Soho's lightweight raglan. It's a free pattern. This was my, I think, first long sleeve sweater that I ever made. Pretty positive. And naturally I did lace weight held double because a fingering weight sweater <laughs> is is a little ambitious for our first sweater. If you have not ever knit a sweater before, it takes quite a bit of time. So um, it, it was quite ambitious. It took it took some time to do, but it's a really nice sweater. It has its little quirks. The hem is slightly shifted, <laughs> but, but I have to say for being, it's a raglan, so it's a lightweight raglan. Raglan's one of my favorite fitted sweaters. They just fit really well on me and I think they probably fit a lot of people well. So. This is using yarn from Expression Fiber Arts. Uh, I don't think these colorways are still available. She has a lot of colorways that come in and out. Uh, so I, I don't, I think this was like Plum and then Midnight in the City or something, Hell Double. But I don't know if they're still available. Anyway. <laughs> For like a shop updates, usually what I do in the beginning, um, really not new colorways, uh, nothing new in the shop at the moment. Uh, as I stated in my previous video, we had gotten carpet. You can see it here now. It's very nice, quite comfy and squishy, which is really nice. Um, so that is our new carpeting, and I'm my yarn area here and everywhere in the house is a little discombobulated still. You can see I'm starting to put things back in the shelves. I've slightly changed my orientation. The books are still here, but um, I have the bin switched around a bit and then I have my uh, large cones here. <laughs> I'm just trying to mix things up a little and move things around. still have my shawl basket here with my bunch of my shawls in it. But uh, yeah, just getting things reorganized. And then um, other shop news is not really a um, shop. It's Bri the Brioche Along from Knit Graffiti. She's hosting the Brioche Along. It's been going on for a little while now. And uh, if you, I think you can join at any time. You can follow the link below and it'll take you to her Ravelry page. And um, Multifarious Nature is um, actually sponsoring a prize for one of the giveaways. She's doing many giveaways, a surprise giveaways associated with the brioche long. So uh, the giveaway is one full size skein of yarn of your choice of multifarious nature yarn. So super fun uh, to participate in that. You might have a chance to win that. So again, that's Knit Graffiti's brioche long. And um, yeah, let's get to the next part now. Okay, so I did mention that I will be knitting uh, the next colorway that you guys chose for me to knit with is landscape and I finally kicked it up. So that's the next step before I can start knitting with it. And I just love it. Now you can see it kicked up versus in the skein. There's beautiful speckling throughout and then there's this really nice green and light green and yellow and it's really hard to see in this video. But there is sparkling because there is Stellina in this base that I have. This is um, my merino nylon Stellina base. So it's, it has 5% Stellina in it, good old Stellina. So it has some fun sparkle. This is dyed up on multiple bases, but that's one of the bases it's dyed on. Again, that's landscape. And I'm going to, I'm pretty positive, 
pretty positive because I absolutely love this pattern. I have knit it at least twice. <laughs> this is kind of my one of my favorite uh, little shorty socks pattern. It's called Sail Away Socks. I'm pretty sure it's still on Ravelry. It was free when I when I got it. They're super cute and don't judge the sock. I was wearing it so it's covered in fur. But <laughs> But this is the second pair I made. The first pair I used an Advent, uh, but this one I just used your run-of-the-mill sock yarn that you can get from like Joanne. It was a like Joanne Fabrics or Hobby Lobby. It was uh, just a 50 gram ball and I used that and because it's only 50 grams I wasn't sure if I'd have enough. I did. I had plenty. Um, and then I did a, so I did a contrasting heel heel and toe and um, I used this was remnants of um, a chick that knits advent so <laughs> so I knit those two and then I ran out of my contrast color so I ended up having to use a little bit of this yarn on the toe so my socks don't match they're like cousins but yeah, it's really cute. It's really good. The first one I made was too loose. I changed my needle size the second time when I made this pair and this pair fits perfectly. It fits perfect. So definitely recommend that pattern. And that's by, uh, it's a free pattern, like I said. And um, I think I forgot to put the designer's name on this again. Oh well, if you just Google Google. Go on Ravelry and search Sail Away Socks. You'll find it. Um, and sail as in like the boat <laughs> sail. So Sail Away Socks. And I'm going to do the uh, contrast heel and toe with my Dusk colorway. So this is Dusk um, in Maltaris Nature. It's absolutely gorgeous, like navy, deep, deep navy blue with this black halo. It's so beautiful. I love this color so much. I used this in um, my Comfort Fade Cardi by Andrew Mowry and this was my remnants. So I'm going to use that as the contrast heel and toe. I think that's going to look really, really cool. Don't you guys? I just think that's going to be a really good combination. So... <laughs> I, I really like that combo and I think it'll just bring out the speckles because there's some really nice dark blue or dark and dark green speckles in here so I just think that's gonna be a fun contrast and I'll do heels and toes and I might do the um, ribbing like your cuff in that too maybe mm, I'll think about it otherwise definitely the heels and toes so that's my next cast on. I really need to do that because I've been wanting to and since I finally cast something off, which I will show you shortly here, we're gonna get into the works in progress first. So my works in progress, I've got um, only two that I really, well, I guess three, I worked on three <laughs> and to be fair, I had to completely redo one of them. Oh, this little shirt. So I do like working with this yarn. It is a cotton um, merino. Yeah, I think it's merino or wool. It's it's a wool cotton blend. It's called O Wool. It's 50-50 blend. And you're going to notice something interesting. What? <laughs> yes, my friends. I had to completely restart this. So I got, I was, I think four rows, four rows from completing the repeat on my little, um, this is the Axilla, 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 Summer Tea by Strukvila, Strukvila, I'm not saying that right. This is a paid for pattern and I am so frustrated. It was totally my fault. So I was, I was about four rows from the end and I looked at the I looked at the lace work and I was like, something isn't right. And so I looked back 
and I was looking back at the repeats somewhere along the way. I, I either didn't do a yarn over in the right spot or something and it totally screwed it up. And in some cir circumstances, you can just go, who cares? <laughs> but when it's a lace pattern like this and it's quite vivid, the pattern, because it's lace, and it's, I mean, this is a legitimate lace. Like this is very, very visible. It did not look good. So I ripped it back. I ripped it back all the way to the collar. So I didn't have to completely redo it, I guess. But this, this collar part was still there. I just, I ripped all the way back to that <clears throat> and started back over. So I have a lot of uh, ground to cover to get back to where I was. But I'm still very much enjoying knitting with the oval. Highly recommend it if you are looking for a um, like a summery wool because I know there's cotton, cotton, and cotton bamboo, and if you can knit with that, go for it. <laughs> for me, that hurts my hands. So this is this is excellent. So anyone that is looking for something quick for a quick knit because this is worsted weight. Um, I cannot say too much about the pattern yet, but so far I'm really enjoying working on it. Clearly I'm redoing what I already did, but it's, it's a, um, it, it's a feat, you guys. This, this is, um, it was an oops. And I think it's a lot to do with the fact that I was doing this while I'm watching TV at night. Probably not the best idea. Probably not. But, you know, we do the best we can. Anyway, <laughs> this is, um... And Barn Owl is the colorway. It's a really beautiful light gray. It's so beautiful. So I will keep on working on that. And hopefully by the time it's warm, I will have this completed because it's a little short sleeve. It's super cute. And um, yeah, enjoying it so far, but definitely need to pay attention in the lace work section. If you take this on, don't. Don't get distracted. Because <laughs> if you get distracted, you'll probably make the mistakes that I did. All right, next is all right. So the Ripple Bralette by Jesse Made Designs. Uh, this I have gotten some progress on. I did not screw this one up yet. <laughs> Thank goodness. So now I can see a little bit more of how the uh, fabric is being created here. So this again is using a like a lace weight held double. Uh, marling. They're two different colors. This is um, a very much blended yarn from, I think it's Old Mill Yarns out of Allegan. They're, they're sold at Baker Studio in Allegan. So here is what we've got so far. Definitely some progress. This little Lock and Lou sun. Isn't it so fun? Little Sun Progress Keeper, and I've gotten some serious yardage here. I've got um, covered like, I don't know, three inches, three inches of, of ground covered here. So this is what it's looking like so far. I probably should, probably should look back at the pattern now because I've been just, just been trucking along since uh, <laughs> part of this is very repetitive, but uh, yeah. Really, really enjoying it. I did make mistakes in the beginning row between these two, like I mentioned a couple of videos ago, but I, you know what? I'm just leaving it. I don't care. I don't, it's not bothering me. It's not gonna affect the fit or anything. So as you can see, it's very lightweight looking. It is semi-transparent, semi. I mean, if you put this like this, you don't see it, but obviously the way this is gonna be worn it's going to be stretched. But again, I have no intention to wear this as a garment, like outside garment. I'd be wearing this under something. So uh, the feel of the fabric, I think, is very good. It's lightweight, so I think it'd be very comfortable to wear as an undergarment. And uh, I have no idea about the durability or anything yet of this, this uh, yarn, because I have not washed this and used it for anything yet. This is my first time experimenting with it. But all I know is when it's held single, it's extremely delicate. So held double is definitely best. 
but yeah, I think it's looking really good. It feels nice. You know, it feels really good. It's uh, has kind of the feel of cotton a little bit. The knitting is is um, not the feel of cotton. It's definitely has some bounce back and springiness and it's not hard on your hands. So it's a really pleasant feel and um, touch when you're working with it. But it has the feel uh, to the skin of cotton, which I think is gonna be really comfortable. I think it will be um, very breathable and comfortable to wear. So excited about that. And yeah, I just have to kind of figure it out because you have to look at the fits and everything. I'm basically going to be working on this section until I get to the point where I think I have to start shaping the front. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's turning out pretty good so far and the color is really pretty. This is going to get so blasted. I, you know, I'm trying to use natural daylight, but you know, it's just not agreeing with me today. Oh well, it's probably going to be a really dark video. <laughs> It's just, oh, I can't get the weather to behave itself with me. Anyway, lighting issues. Struggle is real. There we go. So that's the Ripple Bralette by Jessie Maith, and I'm enjoying it so far. But like I said, I'm very, I've just kind of, I'm near the beginning-ish of knitting it, so it'll change. But I'm excited. The next one that I've been working on is a special, special gift for someone. So I hope she's not watching this. <laughs> I know she sometimes watches my videos, so I hope she's not. I don't really want to ruin it. It's a surprise for her, but as I said, um, this is the Whippersnapper. It is going to be a gift for a friend of mine. She's having her first baby. And this has been so much fun. I did make a mistake and had to rip back because this is paid for pattern. Um, but I just had so much fun knitting with my first color, the Frost colorway by Multifarious Nature, that I completely knitted too far. So. My first stripe ended up being too big, so I had to go rip back and then start again, and then I had to remember that I needed to do the texture pattern for the second stripe. So here's a little whippersnapper so far. It is the cutest thing ever. I'm doing the two to three year old size. Let's see if this is gonna work here. All right, Let's see if we can kind of get an idea. Um, I did, it just says to cast on. I did the tubular cast on, which is a little bit more time consuming, but it gives you a lot of nice stretch and it gives you a really nice finish. And I feel like, especially for a little kid's garment, you're gonna be ripping it on and off of the kid all the time. Um, and and they might be doing the same thing. So you want it to be really stretchy and durable. So um, this is all done in super wash yarn. This is, uh, like I said, the frost colorway by Multiverse Nature. It is a super beautiful light blue. And that is on my Merino nylon blend. Super soft and durable. That's gonna be on the top here. And then the next colorway is the textured one that I have going on here in this textured stitch. This is Odette. Odette is a much more gray blue. Again, a light blue, but it's definitely more of a gray blue. So that is the next colorway and it's this fun textured pattern. The texture pattern is really cool. Uh, when I first started the first section of the texture pattern, I totally thought I screwed it up, but I did not. It is correct, but it it just, I don't know, it didn't look right to me, and it is it is correct. So we're good. I'm almost done with this texture, uh, kind of, almost done with the texture pattern. I think I have at least one more repeat. Um, yeah, at least one more repeat. And... Again, I'll see if I can find the picture to show you guys because it is the cutest little sweater. So here we go. This is the two to three year old size. And like I said, this is the second colorway I'm currently working on. And then the original is I am going to put it between each color. And then the cuffs and the um, bottom of the sweater, I'm going to make the last colorway here so it will um, just kind of look 
to me it looks a little more cohesive but everybody's different so again this is Odette or Frost Odette and then the next color after that will be um, <clears throat> Winter is Coming, which is a super fun speckled like blue color. So that's going to come after Odette. And then um, yeah, the next one I'm going to do is Lake of Shining Waters. Just super fun and beautiful beautiful blue and then the last one is going to be Ocean's Deep which is such a stunning blue it's so vivid it's just amazing <laughs> so yeah I'm very excited about it I am so enjoying working on it this is a very special project for a very special person and I just think that this is gonna be so much fun and I hope she loves it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is the progress so far. It is, uh, you know, slow going. I mean, it's actually going fast, relatively speaking, because normally I make adult size garments. So it's going really pretty quick considering I screwed up and had to go back. So it's going pretty quick. Um, it's just a lot of fun to work on. So I'm quite enjoying it. And it is fingering weight though, so it does take a little longer, but I think it's it's just going to keep on clipping along. It's a lot of fun to knit on. So that is, again, Whippersnapper by Triona Designs. Very much enjoying it. It's um, so fun, and it's fun knitting with my yarn. I love knitting with my yarn. And then the, I think that's all of the projects I'm currently working on. Yes. Okay. So those are all the works in progress. And now we're going to get into acquisitions. I don't always do acquisitions. I am really trying to work for my stash. Uh, so these are acquisitions that I did not purchase. <laughs> they were gifted to me. So uh, my birthday was last week, March 30th, and uh, I was gifted some wonderful items and I'd love to just share them. Um, and actually, this is not a gift, but I was able to work on it. So I think I'm going to talk about, well, no, I'll talk about the acquisitions first. And then I'll talk about, <laughs> I, uh, a lot of it has to do with spinning. So for my birthday, um, my husband got me a lazy Kate. So prior to, uh, if, if any of you don't know, I should have brought it her up here, but I have a ladybug spinning wheel and I love that wheel. But I do not have a Lazy Kate, and I did not have extra bobbins. I just had three bobbins that um, I got with the wheel when I purchased it. So I ended up getting a Lazy Kate that goes with the uh, Ladybug. So it actually is made to go with it. So I now have that, and it's attached to the front of the Ladybug, which is awesome because then it just all comes with you. It's very portable in that sense which I absolutely love. And it doesn't take up then extra room and you don't have to try to keep track of the Lazy Kate. It is part of the wheel now. <laughs> so I love that and I've now used it and I spun up a bunch of yarn, you guys. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I'm gonna be talking more about spinning right now. So if you're not interested in that, I understand, but I really am grateful that you joined me today and uh, yeah, I hope you will join me again. But if you are interested and want to keep on uh, listening, please feel free. All right. So, so for my birthday, I got the Lady Kate, which is awesome and so helpful because now I can spin yarn quick. Prior, I was using a drop spindle to ply and that takes some time. Not a big deal. It's just that, you know, I, I'm a process knitter. I am a process Spinner, but I like to knit a lot so I kind of want the fiber quicker than doing a long process spin. I'm learning these quirks about myself, <laughs> the things I, I uh, enjoy more than others. So I got a bunch more bobbins. These are really cool. So my husband bought these for me. They are um, 
from someone on Etsy, a seller, you'll have to Google it. I don't have the name. And, um, yeah. So you'll just have to look on Etsy. If you, like, put, go on Etsy and look up 3D printed bobbins, the Shocked is the brand, the spinning wheel. My Ladybug is a Shocked wheel. But, um, these are the size to fit on there. I got the regular size and they also do jumbo. I got the copper because I just thought they were so beautiful. <laughs> I just thought copper was so pretty to go with my little red ladybug. Um, yeah, it's 3D printed. So it's relatively lightweight. And you, uh, I don't know, I'm assuming you can like specify the design and stuff that you want on here. But this is so pretty. It looks like stained glass. And what's really nice about this, it's not that I don't like my normal ones that came, my bobbins that came with my wheel. But the nice part about this is you can actually see the building up of your um, your yarn. Well, not only your single ply yarn, but then when you double ply. Plus, these have a smaller um, rod. <laughs> so your bobbin actually holds more fiber than the standard bobbin that you can get. And yeah, I, I'm pretty positive that they're probably pretty cost effective compared to the ones that came with it. It's a little more noisy when you use it. I've used it now. It doesn't come with the yarn. I put that on there, but my lead yarn. But it does make a little more noise on your wheel when you're using it. But other than that, oh, and the other thing, so this little trough here that the, um, your little like tension goes into, um, your scotch tension. So I have scotch tension, I'm assuming, well, this is for a shocked wheel. So it has scotch tension thing here. So this little ridge in here is fine. However, I noticed, I think on basically every single one that I had, there was little like trying to think of the right term here, but like um, burrs, that's the word I'm looking for, burrs, like little burrs in there. So I actually had to take um, like a pocket knife and just kind of rub along the surface and just get rid of those burrs. And then it was for, totally fine because you do not want your scotch tension to get caught on those burrs because, well, it will shred it because it's, it is cotton usually that um, cord that goes on there. So you do you do want to make sure you get rid of that but other than that i i have nothing but nice things to say about this i really 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 like these bobbins excellent and they're so beautiful so beautiful so i always admire these kind of fun bobbins that i see um electric wheels with they look so fun and so cool and i'm just like gosh i want pretty bobbins well here we go now i've got some i've got th i think i got three yeah, three more of these. So now I have six bobbins, which is more than enough. Uh, I usually do two ply yarn. However, I did do three ply yarn. <laughs> so now that I have all those bobbins, I was able to spin up some yarn that I have and then ply it because I had enough to ply. And this is the yarn that I made. So this is Rambo, Rambo Lay, not Rambo Lay, uh, Romney. <laughs> This is from my local yarn store. They had clearance on some of their fiber. And I apologize, I do not remember what the brand is. Ooh, I should have written that down. Sorry about that, guys. I'm gonna try, I'll try to leave a comment below if I can get the um, brand. I'm pretty sure I have it. So this one was called Cupid. And it's Romney, which I've never spun Romney before. So this is my first experience with it. It was fun. It is a, um, I guess, a variegated. It's not only really variegated. Um, I guess it was a variegated braid, is what it was, and it was a four ounce braid. This is not all of it. I have more. I I broke it when I was flying, so I actually had to. Um, it's not even that I broke it. Okay, so I'm still learning how to take your braid, separate it. Uh, according to how you want to spin it. So I wanted to spin this a three ply. I've not three plied before. This is three ply. So what I did is I separated it into three chunks and two chunks were actually the same weight. The one chunk was a little bit heavier and when I plied it then that one bobbin had a little bit extra on it and so I only two plied the rest of it 
and I did a bracelet for buying on my wheel. But this is what it turned out. So I did it separated by color. So most of it ended up applying the solid color. There we go. But I did get some of this like barber pulling where you have the different colors together in different areas, which I think is super fun. It makes it look like a candy stripe. But I love that it kind of just did it in different areas. Some areas actually stayed with the color and then some barber pulled. That is probably a flaw, technically speaking, when it comes to the skill. That's considered probably a flaw, but I, I'm, imp I'm impressed. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> I think I, this is the first time I've ever done a three ply and it's really nice looking. It's super plump looking and round. It is a little bit over twisted. I definitely over twist my yarn. I, I just do. So I'm still working on that, but this is progress. This is progress in the right direction. And yeah, I mean, you can see I could definitely overspin it because <laughs> it just like already starts to fly back on itself, but this is washed and uh, everything. So pretty excited about that. It's I think 50 yards total. I think I think I got 50 yards on that. So yeah, I'm excited. That was my first experience uh, doing a three ply and working with Bromney. So I really like the feel of it. It's a little bit coarse, but I don't think, you know, nothing crazy. Um, I think it would make a really fun cowl. Um, of course, socks are always also a good option. But, you know, like these could be, this could be some fun socks. I know it's called Cupid, so it's probably more for Valentine's Day, but I mean, some fun Christmas socks, maybe. Who knows? But excited about that. Anyway, back to acquisitions gifts. So <laughs> this, oh my goodness. So I got this from my family. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so fun. All right. The company is Wool Gatherings. They are, I'm pretty sure they're on Etsy. I'll include a link to their Etsy shop, just their Etsy shop. Um, not directly to this item, you can find it, I'm sure. But, oh my gosh, you guys. This is 30 breeds of sheep. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. So it's alphabetized on the outside. So it has every breed from A to Z basically that this that is in here. So there's 30 different breeds and there's a bunch in here that I mean pretty much all of these I have never worked with. The only one I have currently spun that is on this list is Romney because I literally just did it. But there's a bunch of other ones in here and I have a braid of tea swatter and I haven't done it yet. And I want to do the, um, I kind of want to do the sample first and see how that works and then do the braid. Cause it's a very long staple and I just, yeah. Anyway, I'm so excited. So, oh, tea swatter. Crazy. So it comes, each one comes in a little bag like this. They're one ounces. So you can make little one ounce skeins. And they come with a card. Each one comes with a little card that has, oh, don't want to lose my, my beautiful fiber here. Um, it has the breed. Ooh. Tease water, there you go. The breed, the one ounce, has of course the company name, but then on the back, this is where it's super cool. So you can put the name again here, I guess. Yeah, I guess just put the name again on here. The yardage, the reps per inch, which I don't really do that. I've just been spinning for fun. And then notes. So if you did like short draw, long draw, you can put those notes on there. 
Um, if you did like two ply, you can write that on there too. And then you would just attach this to your little sample scheme that you make and then you'll know everything about it. And that'll be super helpful if, cause this I feel like is an excellent way to test a fiber, see if you like it. And then you can buy more of it, like get either a large, you could get a fleece, you could get a large, just amount of treated and washed fiber. And then you would know like what you did to create the yarn that you create out of the sample. So cool. And there's so many different breeds. And this is such a great way to try, like this, I've never even heard of this. Manx Ligatan. It's beautiful brown. So pretty. So there's just like, and there's so many breeds. And then you got uh, Swallowdale. It's really beautiful, like a gray color. So pretty. And there's blacks in here. There's just, there's Gotland in here, which I'm so excited to try that. I've never spun Gotland. I've never even knit with it. See, that's the fun part. It's like I get to make the yarn and then I get to knit with it. And I've never knit with a lot of these. So I am so, so, so excited about this. This is so much fun. So basically my birthday was all about spinning. <laughs> And that was just an awesome gift. So if you are looking for a gift to give um, a spinner or you know someone who is interested in fiber arts, oh my gosh, that is the best gift. <laughs> 30 different breeds and then also these bobbins, amazing. So really excited. I had a great birthday. Um, I, had, I took the day off and so I got to spend it with my husband because um, we got the new carpeting so that happened on my birthday and then um what else um oh my gosh you guys i totally forgot i have a finished object and i didn't show you this is <laughs> oh my gosh all right this is the real life you guys i do not i do not edit my videos so you're getting me in the raw here anyway. Oh my goodness. So I am going to cast on my uh, landscape socks because I cast off and washed and blocked my brioche slouchy socks by Kari Sinks. <laughs> they are done. Thank you. They're finished. So a really fun pattern. Uh, will I do it again? Probably not. Nothing against the pattern, but I just, this brioche section being on socks, it just took so long. <laughs> For socks, I don't want to spend that much time on socks. It's totally up to you. It's like the same thing with, um, I've seen some socks that have beautiful, uh, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> The cabling, beautiful cabling, like all over the socks. And I have no desire to do it because it cabling takes me a while and I don't want it to be on my socks. If I'm gonna be doing cabling, I want it to be somewhere where it's visible, like on a shirt or sweater, which I don't do cabling much because it's quite involved. <laughs> but yes, brioche on my socks, I don't know. If it was two color brioche, I might do it because I feel like two color brioche just really entices you but I haven't worn them yet so I don't know like fit how it's gonna feel I tried them on they fit great but when it comes to actually wearing them how they'll wear uh, I will I will report back but yeah the heels are really cute really nice little um, slip stitch heel pattern it's kind of like an eye of partridge basically and then you've got this nice ribbing here so it hugs your foot really good and then this slouchy area fits nicely. This is a little bit tight. So when I tried this on, I put, um, I, I tried it on and I, you know, slouched it down to get them on. And that I really had to pull over my heel. So that was, that was a little snug. I know it'll loosen a bit with wear, but it, it was a little bit of a snug, snug fit. However, you know, they will loosen a little. I love this. This is my Scarecrow colorway. And they are, it is currently in the shop. It is a limited run colorway. So just like landscape being a limited run colorway, once they're gone, they're gone. So get your hands on it while you can. 
and yeah, I really, really like it. It's so fun. Super fun colorway. Lots of pretty colors in it. And yeah. So there's my finished object that I totally forgot to tell you guys about. Oh my goodness. This is just silly business. I can't believe it. <sighs> yeah. But I'm excited. I'm so grateful that they're finished because this part just seemed to take forever. And like I said, once you get to the foot, it goes a lot faster. So it is a fun pattern, but if you, um, I don't know, for socks, I'm not sure if I will really do that pattern quite a, lot, uh, quite a bit where the sail away socks go quick. Because they're basically stuck in it <laughs> the entire time. So that's it for this week, you guys. I hope you're doing well. What are you up to? What are you working on? Are you knitting? Are you crocheting? Is it warm by you? Are you doing stuff outside? I'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to comment below and let me know what you guys are up to. And I look forward to chatting with you soon. Have a great rest of your week, guys. Take care.